This piece is entitled, The Caller. He keeps calling me, but I don't feel like talking to him right now. A dark, ominous cloud of shame overshadows me with thunder and flashes of guilt. I remember that fateful night I met the caller. I was in my territory, queen of the nightlife, the desire of men. The cash flooded in as I served men with my body. One evening, the caller walked into my room at the brothel. Give him anything he wants because he paid a fortune for you, my boss told me. I looked at the caller up and down. He didn't look like someone that could pay so much money to make my boss practically kiss his feet. I was about to undress when the caller stopped me. That's not what I came for. He handed me a gift. Perplexed, I unwrapped a gorgeous and dazzling dinner gown, royal purple. This is an attire befitting a queen, he said. Go and wear it. I want to take you out on a date. I had never been on a date before, so I was excited and also nervous. In less than five minutes, I was out of the bathroom dress, hair and makeup done. To my surprise, I found the collar changed into an expensive designer suit holding a silver clutch and shimmering heels. Grinning from ear to ear, he gave me the purse and said, allow me. As he helped slip on my heels, I felt like Cinderella. You are the beauty of Elion, he marveled. Shall we? he asked, taking my hand. His driver opened the limousine door and greeted me with so much honor and respect, two things I've never had in my line of work. On the ride to the venue, the caller kept gazing adoringly at me from where he sat. I blushed. When the limo came to a gentle halt, the door opened. After you, the caller gestured. Utterly astonished, I beheld a magnificent mansion with acres of lush land, flowery gardens, and lily ponds surrounding it. Where are we? I asked. My house, he replied. Before I could say anything, he led me by the hand into the kingly estate. The butler greeted the caller. Welcome home, your highness. Then he turned to me. May I have your coat, your majesty? As he removed my coat from my shoulders, I thought, is this a joke? The caller and I proceeded to the dining hall and immediately he pulled out a chair for me at the long table. I thanked him and he sat across from me. Questions overwhelmed my mind and my heart was conflicted with emotions. As if reading my mind, the caller said, after dinner, I'll answer all your questions. Maid servants entered the dining hall with a three course meal. The meal was scrumptious and with every bite I felt as if my worries were melting away and being replaced by such heavenly peace. Not being able to contain the burning inquiries in my heart, soon after the meal I blurted out, Thank you, sir, for such kindness you have shown me this evening. But why? Who are you? My name is Jesus. That name sounded too familiar to me, having heard women scream that name within the brothel as they rendered their services. They made that name sound so vulgar. However, as this man said his name, my body trembled with awe and there was a tugging at my heart. I asked, so what's your deal, Jesus? I mean, he paid to have me for a night and I find myself here. What's going on? He stood up walked over to me and stretched forth his hand, asking, May I have this dance? Astonished and puzzled, I responded, Okay. He led me to a grand dance hall with ornamented walls of mirrors and a high ceiling used as a canvas for exquisite paintings. Music permeated the hall with the sound of thousands of angels singing glorious tunes. Jesus got me into position and said, Now, let me lead you. He gracefully whirled and twirled me around the room, all the while fixing his eyes on me. In his arms, I felt like a princess, and he was my loving prince. He then said, I am the king of kings and prince of peace. You are royalty, I asked, and he nodded. The music ended and I stared into his captivating eyes. Suddenly, 
I was aware of his right hand. I turned it over to see his wrist and I was horrified. In his left wrist I saw the same thing. Both had gaping holes through them. Taken aback, I covered my mouth in shock. He then removed his shoes and showed me the holes also in his feet. This was the price I paid for this evening with you. My eyes widened. What? He then replied, I am the Lamb of God who was slain for your sins. I died in your place on the cross to pay the debt you owed my father. Your father? I've never met your father, and this is the first time I'm meeting you. Yes, Jesus said, but my father and I know you very well. My father is the just judge, and everyone is accountable to him for their actions. At that moment, I thought of my life and the things I do on a daily basis. I suppose I have many charges against me, right? I haven't lived a tolerable life. My lifestyle is dirty and lowly, as you both well know. Jesus said, Indeed, he knows. But he sent me to pay the price for you to be cleared of all your charges. You have been freed of the debt you could not pay. Bewilderment was written all over my face, yet he smiled at me and said, I'd like you to meet my father. He's expecting you. He is? I asked. Yes. I told him I want him to meet the woman I love. Love? Jesus' eyes seemed to glisten and glow in response to my question. My heart was gripped by his compassion. Teary-eyed, I asked. You love me? And he said, with all my heart. A torrent of tears poured from my eyes. How can you love someone like me? I don't deserve someone like you. Jesus began wiping away my tears. My love for you is unconditional. If given the chance, I'd give my life for you all over again. I pray that you accept my love for you. I shook my head in disbelief. I must be dreaming. Are you asking me to be truly yours? To be part of your family? He said, Yes, leave all that you know and be with me. You are no longer a whore but my true love and I am jealous for you. Taking a step back, I asked, Can I go home and think over all of this? Of course, he answered. I won't force myself on you, for I am a gentleman. He led me back to the limousine and told the driver to take me home. Jesus said he'd call me that evening to hear my answer. It's been a week and I haven't picked his call. Doubt and fear of the unknown have been constraining me in a chokehold. I hear a sinister voice in my head saying, that guy Jesus is too good to be true. Do you really think he loves you and will forgive you for the crimes you've committed? Look at you, you are a filthy whore. These words shatter my soul to pieces and crush my hope. I whisper, I am not worthy of you, Jesus. All of a sudden, now I hear another voice, crystal clear, saying, Worthy is the Lamb, and He makes you worthy. With this voice, I remember Jesus' nail-pierced hands and feet. No one in my life has ever loved me. My parents abandoned me as a child, and men flocked to me to merely satisfy their own sexual pleasures. None of them loved me, talk less of dying for me, but Jesus did that just for me. Thinking of him envelops my heart with perfect peace. The stormy clouds of shame and guilt dissipate and my heart explodes with joy that Jesus truly loves me. He's calling again. Hello, Jesus? I'm sorry I've not picked your calls. <laughs> Will I marry you? <gasps> Hold on. He's asking me to marry him. Wait, he's asking me to marry him? Who am I that he is mindful of me? <gasps> I wonder why he loves me so much. The nails in his hands and feet were the price he paid for me. Such a 
such sacrifice. I can't just walk away from that. I can't just turn my back to this love. There's no greater love than this. And no one else will ever love me this way. I love him. Jesus, I accept you into my heart. And yes, I will marry you.